two sides. Tens of thousands of public sector workers marched through London in the first widespread mass strikes for decades. Teachers, coast guards and job centre staff were among the protesters, forcing the closure or partial closure of two-thirds of schools across England. Several unions organised the action in protest at changes to public sector pensions, which will see members working longer for less money in their retirement. It's not fair at all what they're asking us to do. I've only recently trained as a teacher. I've changed my whole career around and now they're changing everything again. So it's, just, it's really just unfair. We understand there's got to be cuts. Of course there have got to be cuts because of the state of the economy. But just expect us to take so many hits. It's, it's just not fair. The government argues that longer life expectancy means public sector pensions are no longer affordable. They want to bring civil servants' pensions more in line with the private sector. The changes are part of the government's plan to wipe out Britain's debt by 2015. Britain's Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg said the strikes were irresponsible. I think it's a real shame that there are, there are strikes today because there are talks which are actually ongoing between the government and the trade unions. I don't think the strikes uh, help um, members of the, of the trade unions. I don't think it helps the public. I don't think they help the country at large. I think what everybody wants is for us to stick with it carry on talking and sort this out. At London's Heathrow Airport, passengers were warned of possible delays as some border agency staff joined the 24-hour walkout. The police, courts and government buildings were also affected. It's estimated about one in eight public sector workers were involved in the action. It could be the start of a long period of unrest over the government's deficit reduction plan. It also took place as governments across Europe struggled to implement similar austerity measures. Hayley Platt, Reuters. Peaceful but angry, tens of thousands of public sector workers snaked their way through central London protesting against government austerity measures and their impact on pensions. Among them teachers, half of all state schools in England and Wales were affected by the one day strike. This is the biggest strike yet against the government's austerity measures. The focus is on pensions and there are marches like this taking place across the UK. Courts, ports and other government departments were hit by the industrial action, called after negotiations with the government reached a stalemate. The talks may resume, but the strikers claim they're being forced to pay the price for the mistakes of big business and banks. We're not childminders, we're professionals and children are in the classrooms to learn and that's what we're paid to do. But there are alternatives to this and the working people should not have their wages and their quality of life cut because there are things that, other things that should be cut, like for example war. Picket lines were set up across the country. Many parents had to stay at home to care for their children as schools closed. Today our members are saying People can't negotiate in good faith if the government is actually not listening to anything at all that we're saying. And that's why we're on strike. At one point, scuffles broke out between police and a separate group of mainly young protesters in Whitehall near Downing Street, the Prime Minister's official residence. 30 people were arrested. I don't think the strikes uh, help um, members of the, of the trade unions. I don't think it helps the public. I don't think they help uh, the country at large. I think what everybody wants is for us to stick with it, carry on talking uh, and sort this out. When do we want it? 
The unions say the proposals will mean more work and contributions for a reduced pension. In London, the strike meant police leave was cancelled and courts were unable to process cases. More action is likely in the months ahead as the government presses ahead with its plans. Tim Friend, Al Jazeera, Central London. what is to come in this country only we want to stop it before it gets there so we yes we've taken inspiration from Greece because Greece just shows that the boss is prepared to let people starve <laughs> It's uh, not only Greece that's seeing mass civil unrest. In the UK, around three quarters of a million public sector workers are set to protest against government plans to change their pensions and freeze pay. Many schools will be closed and transport is likely to be severely affected as workers embark on a one-day strike. RT's Laura Emmett to listen to the voices of frustration. Down tools up with industrial action. An autumn of discontent starts here as the UK braces for a wave of strikes not seen for decades. This time it's three quarters of a million public sector workers walking out, unhappy with the planned reform of their pensions, which they say will see them paying a lot more and getting a lot less. We don't think there should be a race to the bottom with pensions. We think everyone deserves to have security in retirement. People are talking about withdrawing from the pension scheme because they can't afford to pay the mortgage at the same time um, as paying for their pensions and people are really angry that at a time when bankers are making record bonuses yet again we're being asked to uh, take a pension, cut in our pensions and to pay more for our pensions. The reality is we've got to fight or else we'll just lose everything. These people do a huge variety of key work, from teachers and lecturers to air traffic controllers and coast guards. Unison's the UK's biggest public sector trade union. Deputy Chief Bob Abberley says his 1.3 million members are ready for prolonged industrial action. We're on a, a war foot in. We've got £30 million set aside and uh, we've got a strategy worked out. But I must stress, that's not what we want to do. We want to... Uh, talk to the government and negotiate a uh, sensible package and not the, the uh, ridiculous package that they're proposing at the moment. That package involves raising the retirement age from 60 to 66, raising pension contributions by workers and having payouts based on average career earnings rather than final salary. The unions admit public support is fundamental to having a successful strike action. The government's very unlikely to change its mind about reforms if the public at large doesn't back the unions, but that's by no means assured. Public sector workers do already get very generous um, pensions and the, the cost of those pensions is very much swept under the carpet and the burden falls onto the next generation. It really is absolutely essential that public sector pensions um, are reformed and even after they are reformed, public sector workers will get far better pensions than most private sector workers. The unions want to apply enough pressure to force the government to change its mind and it's no stranger to U-turns. It was hell-bent on reforming the health service too until it decided to take longer to think about it causing friction in the coalition. 
The government's doing this to reduce a current $50 billion pension bill, but it may be cutting off its nose to spite its face. There's a wider issue here, according to the unions. UK pension funds are huge investors in the UK economy. If public sector workers no longer think their pensions are worthwhile, they may stop contributing to them. If there was a widespread withdrawal, pension funds would collapse and that would leave UK PLC very short of investment just when it needs it more than ever. The unions will be stressing that, but is the government listening? Laura Emmett, RT, London. To the UK now, where up to three quarters of a million public sector workers are preparing for industrial action. They're voicing their opposition to plan changes to their pensions and pay, both part of the government's austerity measures there. A third of schools are expected to close, with court hearings postponed and UK airports bracing themselves for disruption. Our Zarina Galushka is in London. This is the biggest mass action uh, day in the decade in London. About 750,000 people are expected to turn, to turn up for these protests. Teachers, faculty members of colleges, college students are all expected to turn up to express their condemnation of the recent pension cuts which are planned by the government. Now, as far as we know, um, it's not just the college students and pupils and teachers uh, that are in strike, although we do have to say that about 90% of uh, London schools are expected to be closed uh, today. Also, there are expected to be long delays at the airports because customs and immigration officials are also striking as well. All of these people are demanding uh, that, that the cuts would not be processed, that the government does not go along with the cuts. They do say that they do want to retain their dignity. They do not want to work longer hours, get paid less. We're going to have to pay more for our pension, get less pension, and work for more years. So some teachers will be working till they're 68, who were expected to work till they were 61. The cuts are being made in the wrong directions. They are not uh, being made towards the individuals responsible for the current financial crisis. Um, those most responsible for our current uh, predicament are uh, have been left largely untouched, and uh, the government seems to be rewriting the terms of uh, certain agreements halfway through without due consultation of the people most involved. The changes that they're making to the pensions, although they're necessary, it's, too, it's way too drastic. So I think although we do need to make cutbacks in certain things, I think cutting the, cutting the teacher pensions by so much is, is, is too much. Uh, we're not expecting any significant disturbances other than, of course, the possible traffic disturbances which could take place. At the same time, there are uh, organizations such as the Education Activist Network who have called uh, on people to turn Thursday into a day of rage against the Tory-led coalition, so they may be the ones who may get a little bit rowdy. At the same time, we also must not rule out the fact that anarchists might also take to the streets and make some damage to the city. But other than that, people are expected to protest peacefully. Again, it's a quarter of a million people that are going to be marching from the centre of London to towards the parliament to make their voices heard and to protest the pension cuts which are planned by the government. Political activist Professor Chris Knight says that the industrial action is a response to the government's mishandling of the financial crisis. What's happening here is that a, a crisis caused by bankers and who've got the politicians in their pocket is, is uh, what, those politicians are making us pay as if um, hard-working teachers, hard-working civil servants, hard-working lecturers uh, and, and others are responsible for this crisis. We all know that's not true, so let's deal with, the, let's deal with, the, with, the, with the problem at its roots. Let's crack down on what I regard as actually uh, electoral fraud and, and, and criminal activity. We have already seen that this government is actually very weak. I mean, nobody voted for it, that's the, the, to start with, and it has already made a couple of U-turns. So we definitely think we can force a U-turn on this one. Uh, and what's going to happen, of course, is that uh, it's not going to be just white-collar work. Because we're building towards, it looks as if the government doesn't back down, we're building for something, towards something absolutely enormous. We're building towards um, something we haven't seen in this country since 1926, a general strike. Uh, and that's going to be very powerful and the government will, 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 will fall if it comes to that. Protest and government plans to change their pension arrangements. There have been big demonstrations in central London. Some anarchists have been causing trouble with uh, scuffles with police around Parliament Square. 24 people have been arrested, according to the Metropolitan Police. 
The unions, though, say today has been a success, although the Cabinet Office says that just one in five civil servants has walked out. Teachers are among those on strike today. 10,000 state schools in England and Wales have been closed or partly closed by the action. In other news this afternoon, more huge job losses at Lloyd's. Just uh, down the road from me here at uh, Parliament Square, where some anarchists uh, and other extremists have been uh, joining on to the demonstrations by the public sector workers uh, and clashing with police. Some minor scuffles. We've certainly seen lots of police fans with sirens uh, whizzing past us in the last few minutes. Let's get the latest from John Brain, our correspondent who's there monitoring events. Uh, John, just tell us what's going on there where you are. Hello, Ben. Yes, well, the emphasis very much on the minor, really. The march itself passed off perfectly peacefully, as had been expected. It was all, always anticipated that a few groups of anarchists would try and hijack the demonstration. What little trouble there has been has been in this area, at the top of Whitehall, just about 100 metres or so from Trafalgar Square. At the moment, the group you can see, uh, the police officers and the group around them, they're surrounding a, f a handful of people who are staging a sit-in protest in the road. The police are trying to get them to move and threatening them with arrest and this was also the location where about half a dozen people were pulled out of uh, a crowd there there was a, a very short kettle for a, about half an hour or so when a group of anarchists ran up this road and got surrounded by two lines of police and the police went in and made several arrests and uh, took people out now, the latest figures we have are that 26 people in total have been arrested uh, from th this event, six of them overnight. And it does seem that the police have used uh, what's called the Section 60 order in a number of cases. This allows them to take preemptive action, for example, if people refuse to remove their face coverings. Uh, so we've seen that in evidence. Rather than wait for people to actually do something uh, such as cause criminal damage. So a slight change in tactics perhaps, from the student demonstrations where, of course, we saw windows smashed, uh, shop fronts uh, attacked, that sort of thing. It has pretty much passed off uh, as well as the police can have hoped for so far. But of course, uh, there's a big city and a number of people roaming around, so they're not taking any chances. They're everywhere, you, every side street you go down, there are police vans with reinforcements ready to spring out. But so far, this has been the, the main uh, mind area for the fairly minor problems. Uh, and John, interesting, we've been talking to a few of the union leaders saying they really hoped that there wouldn't be any trouble, that uh, anarchists and the like wouldn't try to hijack this event today because they believe it, it distracts from the central message of the trade unions. Uh, but I know having looked at a few of the websites of uh, groups like uh, Black Block and so on, uh, that they were planning some sort of action today. So I guess it won't have come uh, completely as a surprise to the police. No, I think the police were very ready for this. They do monitor these websites. They've had experience of every, virtually every demonstration in London recently, such as the student demos, have featured some action from these groups of anarchists. And it's always been a question of each time the police uh, tinker with their tactics slightly. As I say, this time they've done, taken more, made more preemptive arrests, uh, possibly intelligence-led, because uh, they certainly seem to know which people they were going for when they brought people out of the crowds here uh, so and the result has been we haven't seen that sort of running around for, of anarchists of actually smashing uh, equipment we saw them run up this road and as I say the police were ready for them at the top here and quickly surrounded them uh, so so far uh, things have gone the way the police were, have hoped